More than half of people that view the websites that you design, build, and launch online are gonna be viewing it through a mobile device. So the question is, do you know how to design for mobile? Do you really? Mobile web design is more important than ever. So I'm gonna share with you the three most important tenets of mobile web design. So stick around to the end so you get all three of these large pillars of mobile web design. They're very, very important. Let's start with some stats. You can see back in 2015, only 31% of people were browsing websites on a mobile device. Fast forward to today, we're at about 59%. 59% means that it has surpassed desktop as the primary platform or place in which people are viewing websites. So if mobile is now the primary platform, that needs to be the way that we start to think about web design. Primarily, how we design websites should be for the mobile experience. So point number one is that we need to use a mobile-friendly approach. This mobile-friendly approach is incredibly important because by centering the direction of our design around the mobile experience, designers are encouraged to rein in design and rein in all of those decisions by virtue of the limitations. Not only are there size constraints, but mobile users often interact with a single hand and input beyond tapping and swiping. It tends to be more cumbersome than it would be on desktop. So you need to consider, for example, hover animations, which rely heavily on this kind of visual feedback. It's gonna become a problem for the mobile user. And as a result, mobile first designs tend to emphasize simplicity and ease of use right from the beginning. So keep in mind this approach does not doom desktop versions to minimalistic sparsity. On the contrary, it's easier to expand on a simple layout than to simplify a complex one. And that's very, very important. It's so much more difficult to go from a complex desktop design with lots of interactions and scroll hijacking and try to simplify it down to a simpler experience. It's a lot easier to work from simple and then use that extended real estate, use that extended bandwidth or functionality to increase the experience on the desktop. So it's also important to test out your design on mobile first, uh, as a lot of times we are constantly testing these things out on desktop first. And so we need to make sure that we are designing first for mobile, we're thinking about problem solving for mobile, we're simplifying things down for mobile, and that we are testing and viewing our designs on mobile first. Again, why? Because that is the primary people who are gonna be viewing your design. So this is a non-negotiable. There is only so much space. There's only so much real estate for these people who are viewing on the mobile device and they are the primary user group. So make sure that you have a mobile first approach to every website that you design. Yes, this means design the mobile experience first, and then you can get to the desktop. Pillar number two is that you need to know how and when to respond and when to adapt. Responsive design means that the layout, the images, and the typography will grow and shrink depending on the size of the browser or the device. Whereas adaptive design means a complete change in the layout, typography, and images to best suit the size of the browser or the device. You can see this example of a website I'm building inside of Wix Studio. It has both responsive and adaptive natures built right into it. So you can see as the browser starts to shrink, we're gonna get some of that responsive nature. My text right out of the box is responsive. So it is scaling the text. We are scaling the spacing in between the navigational elements up top. The images are scaling. All of that is responsive design. But you'll also notice that as we get to a certain point, this design is going to adapt. It's gonna move from a two column layout and a full navigation to a mobile navigation and a one column layout. And as we get down to mobile, it's going to shrink and adapt even more to the device size. Different images, different typography to adapt, but scaling and being responsive at the same time. Now, a few things to note, scaling text is awesome functionality. It's fantastic for responsive designs, but you do wanna set some limitations, a max width or a max size or a minimum size for that text so it doesn't get out of control too large or too small. The general principle that I tend to live by when it comes to responsive design is to make sure that it just works as much as possible. I don't think in traditional breakpoints, desktop, tablet, mobile. And if I thought that way, I'd have to have a breakpoint for every type of device size out there. 
I don't want to do that. I just want to make this thing work in a really responsive way as much as I possibly can. And then when I need a breakpoint, I'm going to initiate a breakpoint. Very easy to do in no code builders like Wix Studio. You just immediately move to a breakpoint or establish a new breakpoint. So this is very, very important to know the difference between responsive and adaptive. Make sure that you are using both when they're needed and make sure that you're using them correctly. The final pillar of mobile web design piggybacks off of the first one, which is the idea of a mobile first approach. And this has to do with animations, motion, and interaction because animations and interactions are a fantastic way to bring life to your designs, but they can be tricky to successfully navigate on mobile devices. So knowing how to gracefully degradate the ideas that you have for all these animations, interactions, scroll hijacking that take place on the desktop, they need to be simplified and streamlined and stripped down on the mobile. I think Apple is a great example of graceful degradation. Their product landing pages commonly have video and complex scroll animations. You can see our Vision Pro here. As I start to scroll down, I get this really interesting kind of movie and interaction that takes place with a lot of parallax motion and the goggles moving. But when I go over to the mobile view of this, it's just static and it just scrolls down. Why? Because this is really difficult to navigate. It's not a great experience on a mobile device. Let's take a look back at the website that we're designing. You can see as I scroll down, I have some things that work fine, like fade in animations and interactions, but now I have a sticky sidebar and I have elements scrolling on the right hand side. And we do this in a couple of places here where we kind of move things down the side and stick an element. But what we do not do is bring that over into the mobile experience. You can see I've just statically placed the content there and I've started to move down the screen. All of it is just statically placed. The content is accessible. It is easy to understand. And I don't have to figure out any sort of weird scroll interactions on my mobile device. These examples, I think, highlight the need for simplicity on the mobile device because people are moving around. They're busy. They're doing stuff. They're moving through your website on a mobile device, probably with one thumb. We need to make these interactions easy and accessible and enjoyable for our users. And again, these are very, very easy to do inside of your website builder. Here in Wix Studio, all I have to do is drop down to my next breakpoint that I have determined, and then I can reconfigure the layout and the interactions. I simply come up to my elements, go up to my animations and effects, and I can change all of those, designating it to work on desktop, but then to streamline it, strip it down and simplify on the mobile and so very important that you abide by these tenants because they're going to help you in the long run well that's it those are three of the most important pillars of mobile website design in my opinion but maybe i missed something let me know down in the comments what do you think is highly important for mobile website design i'd love to hear your thoughts and if you're looking for more content you can like subscribe to this channel as well as look at these videos left and right of me i'll see you in the next one